Man life sure was better in the 1950s. A man could provide for his family with a single factory job, while the woman stayed at home to care the kids in the house, had two cars, and a life. Or was it? You know, I've been seeing for a while now these videos, these TikToks, these whatever you call them, where people are saying how life in the 1950s was so much better and how a man alone provided for his family. Here's the problem with that. You're comparing an economy from 70 years ago to today's economy, and this is pretty much comparing apples to, I don't know, pears or something. In the 1950s, coming off of World War II and thousands of both men and women coming back from the war and entering the workplace, there was a huge economic boom. It was the creation of the suburb. Government was spending tons of money on not only infrastructure, but also government programs like the GI Bill to send GIs to school to become well-trained uh, members of the workforce. President Eisenhower in the 1950s, main focus was to really balance the federal budget, but he had a much smaller government with far fewer government programs to balance. He expanded Social Security and invested in things like the uh, state highway programs. A lot of the state highways that you drive today were created through these programs in the 1950s. There was a huge boom in both manufacturing, still locally in America, and also what? Commercialism. In the 1950s, as GIs returned home and we created the suburbs and what we now call the American dream took root, America's GDP grew by 37% and unemployment remained low at around 4.5%. By the end of the decade, American families had 30% more purchasing power and as TVs and movies became more and more popular, commercialism took hold and America started its great addiction as consumers. One of the greatest inventions that really became popular in the 1950s, even though it was invented about 20 years earlier, was the television. Television programs became a household staple in the evenings. And of course, who could forget the creation of commercials? Just add Kool-Aid to water with ice, add some sugar, and stir. For the very best drink you ever made. Be sure that the envelope says Kool-Aid. But the notion that the man alone was providing for his family isn't really completely true. Women made up a third of the workforce in the 1950s. One in three women had a job outside of the home. It was really this double income starting in the 1950s, which really saw a boom in the late 60s going into the 70s that started to create the economy as we know it now. After all, dual income means, well, not twice the money because women were never paid the same as men, but let's just say almost twice the money. Do you think producers or products are gonna keep the prices low if they know that the family's now making twice as much money? According to Explorers.com, the prosperity in the 1950s was fueled by an increase in consumer spending. The adults of the 1950s had grown up in general poverty during the Great Depression. And after World War II, Americans were just 6% of the world's population, but they consumed 30% of all the world's goods. So you're starting to see the creation of the economy as we now know it. America shifted from a production society, meaning that we were a, co a country that produced a lot of goods into a company, uh, country that started consuming more goods than we were actually producing. The 1950s also was the start of credit cards or the buy now, pay later programs. There seems to be a slight problem with your credit card. Really? And what would that be? It's no damn good. A lot of the homes purchased in the 1950s were also done through low interest loans for veterans. So a lot of the homes that were purchased in the suburbs were actually purchased through really good deals and low interest loans that were helped provided and subsidized by the government. But even in the 1950s, a quarter of Americans, both white and black, lived in poverty. So was the 1950s really a better time to live? Black Americans faced huge discrimination, not only from just what would be their neighbors in the suburbs, but suburb bylaws preventing them from buying homes in the first place, not to mention massive discrimination at the banks. Banks would turn them down for loans, really for no credible reason, other than the fact that they were black. Government spending in the 1950s grew so large that there was actually a recession 
at the end of the decade from 1957 to 1958 going into 59. And this was caused by the large government spending and investing into some of these new government programs, including the expansion of the Social Security program, um, all the infrastructure that we were now investing in, uh, including our roads, highways, bridges. And uh, there were some government subsidies for the housing program, building all these new suburbs that a lot of us live in now today. The economy is also affected by what we now call baby boomers. After the World War II ended and American GIs returned home at the end of the 40s, going into the 50s, there was a massive baby boom. Everyone got married and they started popping out kids. We, most people my age are actually the offspring of baby boomers. So when you hear how much better life was, in the 1950s. Here's a few things to remember. A man alone providing for his family while in the majority was not completely the social norm. One in three women still worked. The 1950s economy was would also see a boom towards the end of the decade going into the 1960s as we started spending more and more on our defense programs and our military because of our Cold War fight against communism in Russia. In the 50s, we also had a conflict with Korea. Uh, in the following decade, of course, then started the Vietnam War. And the Cold War was a long sustaining battle, not necessarily of warfare, but just of military spending and military might and military building, constantly building the next biggest weapon. It was President Eisenhower himself who warned us of the great military machine and the power that it can have over not only the country politically, but economically as well. I come to you with a message of leave taking and farewell. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. So the economy back in the 1950s was just a different beast. And to say that times were better back then really isn't fair because it's a completely different economy, a completely different world. The society was just different back then. We had we still had segregation based on, on race. While one in three women were working, what kind of jobs were they allowed to get? Most of them were probably secretarial or assistant positions. Eisenhower was able to give us a great decade in the 1950s through three simple things low taxes, which we'll never see again. I don't care who you vote for. A balanced federal budget, which again, we're never gonna see again. And also through government spending and investing in the economy. These three simple things is what helped provide America the prosperous era that now we now remember as the 1950s. And we're just never gonna see that again. We can't compete with foreign markets in terms of producing things. We can't compete with China. And I've shown this clip in a previous video. I'm going to show it again. The easiest way for America to produce more of its own goods is for us to feel some pain. Because technology has as much, innovation has as much to do with the removal of jobs as just saying, well, they make it cheaper somewhere else. But as a matter of fact, they do make it cheaper somewhere else. And unless America wants to do the best thing that we could do for ourselves would be to pay more for goods and make them here at home and stop our dependency on China for making all the shit that we want and now need. But will we do that? Hell no. Why? Nobody wants to suffer short term. Nobody wants to suffer. That's why they don't fix any of the entitlements. Social security, social insurance, Medicare, Medicaid. They don't really fix them. They just band-aid them. Why? Because nobody wants to feel any pain now. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Comment down below. Tell me what do you think? Was America really better in the 1950s or were we all just full of crap? Is things better now? Also, don't forget I'm only 20 subs away from that 1,000 subscribers. And when I hit 1,000 subscribers, guys, I'm going to do a big old giveaway. I got some really cool stuff to show you soon that's going to be a part of this giveaway. Uh, so please, if you haven't, subscribe. Let's get there so we can have some fun. Guys, I'm Trader Bella. Y'all stay safe out there. Hey, y'all, thanks for stopping by here at Trader Bubba's where we talk about growing and protecting our... Hmm. I guess I should answer the call to freedom. While I'm on the phone, do me a favor. Check out my other videos. You won't regret it. Hello.